Now, your forecast first from KARK4, your weather authority. The cold front that brought the strong thunderstorms last night and very early this morning, now well off to our south and east. The cooler and drier air taking its time getting into Arkansas. We'll see some breaks in the overcast across the northwest part of the state. That's where temperatures will be coolest tonight, down to the low to mid 40s. Elsewhere, clouds will stick around, even a couple of showers in the southern part of Arkansas. We're going to start your early Saturday, generally in low to mid 50s. Your forecast first for Little Rock, cloudy skies right on through the overnight hours. Saturday morning temperature at 51. Arkansas News That Matters starts right now. When tragic news broke out of North Little Rock, six people have died. KARK4 today was first on the air at 4 a.m. with all of the information. And we've got to get to breaking news. A charter bus crashed on Interstate 40. First live on the scene. Here's the first pictures of the bus crash. A very active scene. Telling the important stories of Arkansans there to help survivors of this heartbreaking accident. We are working to just take care of their immediate needs. Obviously, people are pretty shaken up. And now. Continuing coverage of the tragic North Little Rock bus accident from KARK. Now, from the station you count on for local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm Bob Clausen. Arkansas State Police and the National Transportation Safety Board investigating that deadly charter bus crash. We've got team coverage from the crash site tonight, also the towing area in North Little Rock. Hillary Hunt and Jesse Chenier covering those vantage points. And standing by, we'll also have in-depth coverage on safety record of the bus company by investigative reporter Marcy Manley. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at what we know so far. We have learned that the bus was traveling from Monroe, Michigan to Laredo, Texas, so it was involved in some sort of a collision here. That crash happened around 1 a.m. in North Little Rock along Interstate 40. Six people were killed and other six injured, with a total of 22 people on board, mostly Spanish-speaking. The Arkansas Red Cross is providing mental health services for survivors, and the bus company is providing hotel rooms for survivors as well. A lot of things happening here. This tragedy rocking the heart of central Arkansas. krk 4s Hillary Hyun joining us now live from the tow yard in North Little Rock. And Hillary, the bus sits at that yard, and it will no doubt be a center of the investigation. That's right, Bob. The key piece to this investigation is that bus that stays here at the J Hook Towing Company. Now, I have been told it is not moving. You can see that garage back there. That's where they were backing in the bus. I want to show you some pictures that I caught on my Twitter. Take a look at some of these pictures. That was just before sun fell today as they were pushing that bus in there. They said the reason they're putting the bus away is to conserve that evidence. They said they do not want any tampering with that evidence. So they said the key is to put that bus away just in case of rain or other factors that could hinder that investigation. Now I did speak with the owner of the towing company who said that investigation will kick off early tomorrow morning where they will pull that bus back out and take it apart piece by piece. But take a listen to what some of those drivers said to the 911 dispatcher this morning. Uh, there's a second body. Uh, where? Um, out here on the interstate where the the Drivers shocked by the sights of Friday morning's horrific bus crash. Three people were ejected from the bus. One was partially ejected and two uh, the fatalities were still in the bus. The twisted wreckage from the accident now in the North Little Rock tow yard as Arkansas State Police and the National Transportation Safety Board combed through the remains. The bus continued along the, uh, the barrier until it struck the North Hills overpass. The deadly bus crash on Interstate 40 happened around 1 a.m. Friday while the bus was traveling westbound in North Little Rock. The accident claiming the lives of six and injuring others. First and foremost, this is a tragedy. 22 migrant workers were on board the 47 passenger bus heading from Monroe, Michigan to Laredo, Texas before the trip came to a screeching halt. As for what caused the accident, that still remains unknown. The Arkansas State Police has accident reconstruction spread specialists. They were on the scene last night. They will investigate the accident according to Arkansas state law and then any federal violations or uh, equipment uh, problems with the bus will be investigated by the National Transportation Safety Board. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, that investigation continuing tomorrow morning. The owner of the towing company told me that state police and NTSB will be back on site right here at this towing company to take apart that bus and continue their investigation. Now, I asked state police what could have been a factor to cause such a horrific crash. I asked 
whether it was maybe drugs or alcohol with the driver. And what they told me is that it appears that alcohol is not a factor, but the driver did freely submit to a test. So things are still going to be coming out about this investigation. They're hoping to find what actually caused this accident. Live in North Little Rock, I'm Hillary Hunt. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Hillary, thanks very much. Yeah, we're still very early on in this investigation. Authorities say 19 immigrant workers were on the bus heading to Texas. Red Cross officials say survivors are being taken care of at a Little Rock hotel. We spoke to some of those on board and share now how most of them were asleep when the bus crashed. I woke up and we got off the bus because everything had already happened. It's bad because these are people I knew. Passengers say for some it was the first time they were traveling this far for work. Mexican consulate officials are now working to notify families of those involved. Continental Charters is the name that's visible on the bus. You see it right there. But state police confirmed the bus was recently sold to a Florida-based company, despite still operating under the DOT number of its previous owner. Character 4 is Marcy Manley working for you, digging into the safety record on the road of this particular company. Marcy, what did you find out as far as the bus goes, the company, and perhaps the driver? Well, Bob, Vasquez Citrus and Hauling provides foreign migrant workers to growers in Michigan, North Carolina, and California. It employs around 400 people and operates a fleet of six vehicles, including three buses. It's not rated by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, but there are some red flags on its safety profile. According to the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, Vasquez Citrus and Hauling has only two crashes on its record from the past three years. But a slew of vehicle maintenance violations, 20 over seven vehicle inspections, places it on a heightened safety inspection schedule with the agency. The profile shows five driver violations, none of them serious, which included a driver being under 21 years old and two violations on our compliance on the road. The biggest red flag that needs clarification at this point is that despite being registered as operating passenger transport, there appears to be no passenger licensing and insurance information on file. That could be a big issue if it turns out the company didn't meet those requirements and was transporting passengers across state lines. And speaking to that last point, if it comes um, to light that they didn't have that licensing information, that meant that they were operating without authority, and that could be a big problem. Drivers of commercial vehicles like this do have to have commercial passenger driver's licenses. Now, we asked state police if the driver did have that licensure. They confirmed that he had a Michigan state driver's license, but didn't know the details as to whether it was a passenger CDL. Now, we've left messages with the owner of the company, but he has not returned returned our calls or emails. Bob, back to you. All right, Marcy, thanks very much. And Governor Ace Hutchinson, among the people sending his condolences to the crash victims, issuing this statement saying, quote, I was saddened this morning to learn of this tragedy. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those injured and those lost. And safety concerns cropping up in light of this morning's interstate bus crash, especially about lighting at that specific area on North Little Rock Juncture. Kerry Cavoy is just to New York joining us now with continuing our team coverage this evening with the safety aspect of this crash site that's out there. And you spoke to some folks who live nearby and a lot of folks who commute there, and they're not too comfortable with the lighting out there, are they, Jesse? <laughs> No, they're not, Bob. I'm here right along the interstate, and right now is a perfect example of what people have been telling me all day. As you can see, you can only see me out here thanks to a light, and then cars thanks to their headlights and their brake lights. It is pitch black out here, and that's why some residents who live right down the road say they're scared to drive at night. We knew right where it was at. Dorothy and Clarence Morris have a front row view of Interstate 40, which means they were among the first to hear the fatal bus crash early Friday morning. I just heard sirens. Yeah. We were, we're yeah. already in bed. Yeah. They've lived with this view for 14 years. Traffic. And about once a month, they say accidents. Those wrecks happen, and, and when they happen, well, we, we heard them. The couple rarely moves away from this spot, which they say is because of their age, but also their fear of driving when it's dark. Even when we come up here and the lights are not on, it's bad. Lighting has been a controversial topic in the area of the accident. Several years ago, the city of North Little Rock decided to not replace the lights at the I-30, I-40 interchange, which people said made the area more dangerous. It didn't seem prudent at the time to spend uh, a lot of money to uh, replace those lights uh, with the 
uh, potential that they would be relocated or taken down anyway. Bradley says even if these lights were working, it wouldn't have done the bus driver and his 22 passengers much good. The lights at the, uh, the 3040 interchange that, that some people have mentioned, you know, they're about a half mile away, so they would have had no uh, influence on the particular area where this accident occurred at all. Bradley says the lighting where the accident happened has common interstate lighting and doesn't consider it a city issue. It's a U.S. interstate, so the city really has no jurisdiction over the highway anyway. However, it is an issue for people like the Morrises, who like to watch the traffic go by, but don't enjoy being a part of it. People drive so fast, too, so that's another thing. And with talks of an I-30 expansion, I asked Bradley, what about replacing the lights out here now? He says city officials are still undecided about that, Bob. All right, Jesse, thanks very much. And just to wrap things up, charter bus crashing in North Little Rock early this morning, killing six folks, injuring six others. Three of the victims were thrown from the bus. The 47-passenger bus was carrying 22 individuals traveling from Monroe, Michigan to Laredo, Texas. We're going to have continuing coverage on the deadly charter bus crash. Be sure to look for updates online and on the air. KRK4 News at 10. We will wrap up all of today's events. Stay with us. KRK4 News, brought to you by Hanks and Moore Fine Furniture. The galleries at Hanks and Moore. Brand names you know and trust to be the world's finest. Styling that brings any room alive, whether it's contemporary, casual, or traditional. Heirloom quality that will retain its lustrous finish and great looks for generations. And right now at Hanks, enjoy manufactured discounts up to 40% and special interest-free financing. The Galleries at Hanks and Moore Fine Furniture. And this is our 2016 XLE Camry. And as always, lowest price guaranteed. That's what Steve said. We have no idea where it's coming from. Probably saw something on TV. If I had to guess, he's not even doing it right. Hey, welcome to Steve Landers. Okay, thanks for coming in. Steve Landers, that's what Steve said, okay? Thank you. You know, this is great. I don't know why I didn't think of this deal sooner. Uh, thanks for coming by here. Okay, that's what Steve said. You might need that. Thank you. Getting to your dentist can be inconvenient. Sometimes you simply can't take off of work or don't have enough time during the day. At Smile Dental, we add more hours to your day with extended late hours and Saturdays available. We know how busy life can be, so we've made a schedule to accommodate yours. You don't have to miss out on the important or memorable moments. Your convenience and comfort is our first priority. Smile Dental on Cantrell Road in Little Rock. Nothing looks and feels quite like genuine American-made leather. It's easy to see the difference when you get your hands on the very best. And Ferguson's Furniture in Benton has the largest selection of the best leather furniture that money can buy. With unbelievable comfort and construction that will last for generations. Statewide delivery available in 48 months interest-free. Come see our exclusive line of USA Leather Furniture today at Ferguson's Furniture next to the Walmart in Benton. Hey Arkansas, I'm Barrett Baver and I'm going to the live shows on this season of NBC's The Voice and KARK is coming with me to Hollywood. KARK4 is going all the way to Hollywood to give you behind the scenes access of Barrett's journey on The Voice. We have live coverage, insider info and interviews with Barrett and the judges. I think it's going to get really interesting. It all starts Monday on KARK4 News at 10. Brought to you by MNB Bank. KARK4 News brought to you by Akel's Carpet One. Now from KARK4, your weather authority, Arkansas certified most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan. The gusty showers and thunderstorms from late last night and very early this morning, well off to the southeast and weakening by sunrise today. We still do have a couple of areas of showers, maybe even a couple of rumbles of thunder that continue to affect parts of southeast Arkansas. Now, this precipitation really not associated with the front at all. That front is well to the south and east, but we'd have a series of disturbances riding up and along and over the slightly cooler air at the surface. And we are seeing areas of light to, in some cases, moderate rain and in some cases, is some brief heavy rain. Most of that precipitation right now concentrated over far southwest Arkansas and from Magnolia up along US 79 from Camden out toward the Pine Bluff area. This is pretty much going to be the area over the next 12 hours that's going to see the occasional showers and maybe an
an isolated rumble of thunder. The drier air will continue to work in from the northwest as we head through the overnight hours, and everybody will see the rain coming to an end, even for southeast Arkansas, by early tomorrow afternoon. Sunshine, that may be harder to come by in some places. Highs across Arkansas today will obviously before that front came through, mid-60s to around 70 up north, and generally in the low to mid-70s, central and south, with 75 the hot spot today at Monticello. 71 in Little Rock. Uh, that might seem cool, but our average high is down to 67. We're going to be below average as far as high temperatures and low temperatures as we head into the weekend. Right now, we are cooling off just a little bit where the clouds have been the thinnest during the day. That's where temperatures have dropped a little bit quicker. Mid-50s right now from Mountain Home back to Fayetteville. 64 our current temperature and also our low so far for the day. We've got 68 at Monticello and El Dorado and 67 for you folks down in Clark County at Arkadelphia. Well, again, the front just off to our south and east, but we still have plenty of moisture riding along that frontal system that is really have slowed down considerably over the past several hours, and it will remain nearly stationary in northern Louisiana overnight tonight through the first part of tomorrow. It's going to get a push, though, by a disturbance that's rolling through the central and northern plains, and that will be what gets this front on the move, and behind that disturbance, we'll see that cooler and drier air working in. But for overnight tonight, Occasional showers can be expected across the southeast third of Arkansas. They should end by about lunchtime tomorrow, and then we'll see gradual clearing from northwest to southeast. You folks in the far southeast, you may be skunked out of the sunshine tomorrow, but everybody sees sunshine as we head into Sunday. Temperatures generally in the 50s to low 60s for high. And as we head into Monday, another cool day on the way, but we'll begin to moderate somewhat by Tuesday ahead of another storm system and cold front that brings rain chances back to Arkansas by the middle of the upcoming work week. Tonight, Little Rock, cloudy skies down to 51. For your Saturday, we'll start off not very promising as far as clouds are concerned, but increasing sunshine during the afternoon. It'll be breezy with a high of 65. Weather impact number for tonight, right on through Sunday, a zero, no weather problems expected. Next seven days, a cool Sunday is on the way after starting in the low 40s, only a 63. Another cold start for Monday, around 40 patchy frost possible in the north for both Sunday and Monday mornings. But you can see we warm it up as we head into midweek. A couple of showers and thunderstorms on the way for the middle of next week, which in fact is Memorial Day. Stick around. We'll be right back. KARK for News, brought to you by Russell Honda. You got a Sweaters are this season's must-have fashion. At Ross, you'll find the latest styles at incredible savings. This sweater is more than $32 at department stores, but if you want it for less than $18, you gotta go to Ross. Little Rock, Arkansas, we're overstocked with furniture. Used to be at the corner of Shackleford and Bowman, now located on University Avenue next to Target. It's a furniture frenzy of living room, dining room, bedrooms, and, and mattresses with prices that are cheap. Cheap, cheap. Only $5.99, $5.99, $5.99. $1,800? Nope, $8.99. We're overstocked with furniture and name brand mattresses at prices that are busting at the seams. It's a furniture frenzy next to Target on University Avenue. Trying to skip flu season this year? $25 flu shots. No appointment needed. Sherwood Urgent Care. This Toyota Camry is loaded with tons of really cool features. Bluetooth? Yep. Navigation? Yep. Standard backup camera? Yep. Push button start? Yep. Blind spot monitor? Yep. Wireless charging? Yep. Doppler weather overlay? Yep. Lane departure alert? Yep. I low wheels? Yep. And I get it for free? Nope. But I get a great deal? Yep. Nicely played. Thanks. Come into the Camry One event and get amazing deals on the feature loaded Camry because it's only a great deal if it's a great car. During the Camry One sales event, get $1,500 customer cash or qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months on a new 2016 Camry. Toyota, let's go places. Planning your Ozark Mountain Christmas tradition today at explorebranson.com. The perfect pair of shoes or boots can really make an outfit. At Ross, you'll find the latest styles for a fraction of what you pay at department stores. Why pay $89 for these boots when you can get them for less than $28? That's why you've got to go to Ross. Fazio's hookup special. Suit, shirt, ties, socks, $99.99. And as the penguin says, at Fazio's, 
We aim to please. For more info on this great Arkansas professional, go to ArkansasMatters.com. This is KARK 4 News at 6 in high definition. An Arkansas Tech University professor being questioned about a study he published about payday lenders because money matters. Back in 2011, Arkansas Tech University professor released a study about payday loans for Consumer Credit Research Foundation. The professor says the study showed whether a loan had interest or not, borrowers won't make the payback on time. Now, the group Campaign for Accountability wants stricter regulations on lenders. It claims the professor and CCRF were working closely together, and the result covers up the fact that payday loans ensure borrowers an endless cycle of debt. There's a group with an agenda, and they don't like the results of my research, and they're, so they're trying to um, discredit me and, their, and thereby discredit the results. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is expected to finalize regulations governing payday loans before the end of the year. The CFA believes the professor's findings could have a negative effect on the Bureau's final decisions. Pine Bluff police say that they are investigating former Dollarway Superintendent Patsy Huey. On Monday, the school board held an executive session and voted to fire Huey. Pine Bluff police won't say why they are investigating the former superintendent, but a member of the board telling KRK that they asked police to investigate her. Also, Athletic Director Lee Hardman has filed a lawsuit against the school district after he was suspended indefinitely last month. The district has not said why they have suspended Hardman. The story will continue to follow for you. The company that asked you to have a Coke and a smile, well, it's the new exhibit at the Clinton Presidential Center. The exhibit, sh the exhibit showcases the history of the iconic Coke bottle as well as Coca-Cola's influence on pop culture including all that Coca-Cola art we see out there. It also features a full-size antique Coca-Cola delivery truck. President Clinton, by the way, is going to be there himself this evening to dedicate the exhibit a little bit later tonight. Coming up in sports, very busy weekend. Arkansas football on the road this week. The Hogs offense looking very sharp the second half of the season. Details next in your Razorback Nation report live from Oxford, Mississippi. KARK4 News brought to you by Furniture Factory Outlet. Need affordable in-home care for an aging loved one? Superior Senior Care works with local VA programs, long-term care insurance policies, and the Arkansas Medicaid program. We also offer flexible payment options. Call us today. Your windows look like this. Well, why haven't you called me? Hi, I'm Bill from Window World. Before winter gets here, give us a call for a free estimate. We'll make your home more energy efficient. 316-1500 or windowworldlittlerock.com. Thank you for your time. I knew that Arkansas Tech would help me stand out from the crowd. But I didn't know I'd be standing out in front of the crowd. I knew I wanted to be a part of Greek life. But I didn't know Tech would change my life. I knew Tech would help me become a leader. But I didn't know Tech would lead me to graduate school. I knew my art professors had years of experience, but I didn't know that I would get real-world experience before graduation. It's easy to see why more than 12,000 students choose Tech. Come take a tour of campus and discover what else you don't know about Tech. I'm Susie Everett, inviting you to the annual Glitz and Garland Holiday Shopping Event. Get a head start on the holidays and shop dozens of vendors all in one location. It's the premier event of the season with jewelry, clothing, collectibles, holiday items, children's items, and much, much more. November 13th and 14th at the Benton Event Center by Tinseltown Theater on I-30. Don't miss the best shopping of the season. Go to glitzandgarland.com for more details. What a drive. Incredible country. Really amazing. Music going. I made it here in nine hours. And from aligning the coordinates, I'm exactly at the prime spot to see the comet. I know. Only every 120 years. Don't miss out on the totally restyled technology loaded Corolla. Right now, get $1,000 customer cash, or qualified customers can drive a stylish new 2016 Corolla LE for $169 a month. Toyota, let's go places. Hi, I'm Bill from Window World. You know, I end my commercials with thank you for your time. Because I really mean it, and I know that your time is very important. So we appreciate when you give us some time to show you our products and give you a free estimate. 316 1500, windowworldlittlerock.com. Thank you for your time. Not only is Superior Senior Care affordable, our non-medical in-home care services are provided on your schedule to meet your needs on your time. No long-term contracts, and you can cancel any time for any reason. Call us today. 
This is Razorback Nation, powered by North Point Cars. This is your Razorback Nation report. Hey, here's a live look at one of the entrances to Vaught Hemingway Stadium, home of the Ole Miss Rebels. Of course, this stadium, the site for tomorrow's SEC showdown between the Arkansas Razorbacks and those Ole Miss Rebels. The Razorback Nation's coverage of Arkansas football continuing live from Oxford, Mississippi. If anybody has covered this Razorback football team at all this season, then they realize that injuries have been a big-time problem at big-time key positions. That includes the wide receiver position. Arkansas lost three of its top wide receiver playmakers early in the year, including junior Cody Hollister. At six foot four, he's got nice size. He started seven games last season, so he's got good experience. Now, this year he started out fine, four catches for 65 yards, but then he went down with a broken foot. But now Hollister, he's back, cleared to play by doctors, and could see action against the Rebels tomorrow. I think he will. I think he'll be back. You know, we had him today at practice, and he did some good things. You know, we, we just monitored him to make sure he was, uh, you know, he was fine. We're not going to rush it back. We're going to put him in, in the right situations, and uh, he looked good today catching the ball and running routes. It's real nice. You know, we got some, some depth coming back at receiver, which is always nice, and, um, you know, different guys getting a lot of work, which was, which was nice early. So uh, now when we have guys that, that might you know, need a breather or something, we have guys that have played, that have experience, that are back, and, uh, and can fill in those roles. It's obviously nice to have. Now, the Ole Miss Rebels known to be a high-scoring offense, which they are, but if you look at conference games alone, SEC games only, actually the Razorbacks scoring more than Ole Miss per game during those conference matchups. And I tell you what, the Rebels respect what Arkansas can do when they've got the football. They're balanced. Uh, their quarterback's playing at a high level. He takes care of the ball, and again, they just they put you in formations where, man, you have to honor the run, and there's so many gaps you have to fill. And if your eyes get bad one moment, uh, they have tight ends that are stretching the field on you that are very athletic and can make plays. They're doing a very nice job of making you honor both. Yeah, I'm, not more, I'm much more concerned about the defense for Arkansas in this game than I am the offense. Uh, the Hogs will be facing an Ole Miss team that can explode offensively on any given Saturday. Ole Miss has scored 50 points three times this season, including two games where they scored over 70 points. They've got the best passing game in the league, and you can bet they have the full attention of the Razorbacks. Guys, I think their quarterback's playing at a high level for them. I think they're excellent on the perimeter with their skill. I think their running back is a very, very good player. So they're going to force us to make sure we're sound in everything that we do. But at the same point in time, we've got to find a way to take away some of their, their better players, and that'll be a challenge for us. All right, it's a 2.30 kickoff on CBS from Bot Hemingway Stadium, Arkansas, taking on top 25 Ole Miss. We've got a lot of coverage plans for you to get you ready. Tonight at 10.15 is our 15-minute gear up for game day show right here on KARK. Then Saturday, we've got our one-hour game day show. That starts at 10 a.m. And don't forget to go to noshave.org and search Razorback Nation to support our No Shave initiative. Live from Oxford, I'm Aaron Peters. Let's head back to you. All right, AP, thank you very much. And real quick, before we say goodnight tonight, we want to say goodbye to one of our best producers, Michelle Sullivan. She has been with us for six-plus years, I think. She's produced all of our newscasts here, bringing you evening newscasts, I guess you could say, par excellence. Michelle, thanks very much. All right. And it's Veterans Day, not Memorial Day, next Wednesday. Good night, everybody.